Jimmy Porter and welcome to my shop here in Salina, Texas. Uh, today we're going to be working on this colonial grandmother clock. Uh, when I saw it on uh, Facebook Marketplace, they called it a grandfather clock, but when I saw it in person it was actually a slightly smaller scale. I'd call it a grandmother clock. Uh, the gentleman had passed away. Uh, the daughter was selling all of his personal effects, and this particular clock had been in the family, she said, since the early 70s, maybe late 60s. So we'll look this up and see if we can figure out when it actually uh, was built. It's a colonial, and uh, was made in Zealand, and I believe that is in Michigan. So we'll be doing a little bit of work to fix the cabinet up, and we're going to take the movement out and clean it up and inspect it and get it ready to go. Well, I set it up last night and ran it all night, and uh, it uh, lost a couple of minutes, but it really ran pretty decent, and it chimed all night. You can hear that it chimes on a quarter hour. So now we're going to go ahead and take the pendulum off. We'll remove the weights. This clock is easy to take apart uh, because there are just a couple clips to hold the top box on, so the, uh, the box does not need to be uh, disassembled. So I just release those clips and I can just slide the box off. And there we go. Well, here's a first look at the movement. It's actually in very clean condition considering its age, so it's been very well taken care of, although I don't see any stickers or indications that it's ever been serviced. I see that on the uh, strike side here, um, it's interesting, the movement is attached to the shoulder board with a tie wrap, <laughs> so we're going to have to do something about that. And I see that there's an extra pendulum spring, and it's still in there, but I don't think we'll need it because uh, our pendulum is in, seems to be in very good shape. All right, so we'll remove the hands here. It's a pretty simple job. Okay, so the minute hand comes off, and the hour hand is just friction fit to the cannon. Take that off, and then the next step is to uh, just take this uh, face off. One, and the face should fall right away from it. the movement exposed so we'll set this aside and look at it later I'm kind of amazed it's like the movement is just sitting on the shoulder board uh, with one tie wrap on one side and a tiny little nail on the other so we're gonna cut the tie wrap when I looked a little more closely I noticed that there actually are holes in the shoulder board so it was just never bolted down apparently maybe those screws were lost or something but this whole thing will just lift right up out of here. And there it is, chains and all. We'll pull the chains up out of the holes. And uh, we'll go ahead and take this over to the workbench and have a look at it. Okay, I brought it over to the bench here and I've got the chains off of it. And um, had a chance to look it over. And I'll tell you, I don't see any major problems with this movement. It's like the pivots are pretty tight. Um, uh, the pivots have a green sort of cast to whatever was lubricating them. It's probably some type of a, maybe a grease or could be that the brass oxidation uh, caused the, uh, uh, the oil or grease to turn that green color. I don't know. So I think that uh, this movement just needs to be bathed. It's a little bit dirty, but not too dirty. It's got a little bit of, uh, I can see a few little hairs and dust bunnies down in it. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty good. Here I'm using the point of a toothpick to pick some of that green goop out of the oil cups at the pivots. You know, the right thing to do is to totally break this down, but I really don't have the tools to do that for one of these. And I also don't have the knowledge to get this thing back together so that the chimes work correctly. So I'm doing this just kind of it's a light cleaning. I'm getting the gears, the, all the teeth of the gears, trying to get all the excess grease out of there. 
And I will go to the solvent here in a minute and try to wash those a little bit. And then we're going to put this thing in the ultrasonic parts washer uh, to give it a good deep cleaning. And then we'll let it dry out thoroughly and re-lubricate it. Okay, I've got the major goop off of there. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to use uh, some mineral spirits here. And I'm just going to kind of go in and see if I can't clean some of these gears uh, to try to get some of that goopy grease off. I say it's goopy. It's really not that bad. There's just little smudges between the gear teeth. It's not even really built up, but I feel like if I can, the more of it that I can get out, probably the smoother it's going to run. And this is in no way, shape, or form any kind of uh, professional cleaning here. This is, in fact, you know, I know professionals would really look down on what I'm doing right now, but I think it's going to make this movement uh, a lot better and probably will allow it to run for quite a bit more time than it would have otherwise. So it's probably better to do this than not do this, in my opinion. So we just kind of get down in those pivots. Oh, there's one I missed. Couldn't get to with the toothpick, but the brush is getting to it okay. And I can see that that stuff is kind of coming out of the crevices there. So I'm going to put this in my ultrasonic parts washer. And it's my, the washer is not quite big enough to get the whole thing here, but I should be able to put it in for about a half hour on each side and get most of the dirt off of it. So we'll check on this in 15 or 20 minutes, and you can see some of the dirt and solvent is already starting to come off of it. So I think this is going to do a pretty nice job. The cabinet's really in pretty good shape um, mechanically. There's only a couple of small repairs to do. Uh, one of which is these uh, these pillars here uh, that hold the face. Uh, they are loose. They're just stapled on with a couple of, look like a nail gun. So I'm going to add some screws uh, to each one of these to correct that problem. Simple. That should work. I can see where these were originally glued, but apparently that just didn't do the job. So we'll just add this screw. I think it'll make it a better mechanical joint. So I'm just tapping it right back on with the original brads that were used. Okay. That seems pretty good. And I'm going to pre-drill these because I don't want the wood to split when I put the screw in. About a half inch of bite out of these little screws here, and we'll be in good shape. Well, I figured out a way to get it in the parts washer. It's been in there for about... Oh, 35 or 40 minutes, and I've actually had it out once or twice and rinsed it, and it's actually looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and turn it off, and I'm going to take it outside and hose it off and really get it nice and clean, and then we'll dry it and lubricate it, see what we have. So when I was cleaning this thing, I discovered this little chip of wood inside the, the uh, cabinet here, and I wondered what it was for. But when I turned it over to clean the bottom, I could see that it's a piece of the frame for the bottom. And I think what's happened here is that uh, at some point, uh, one of the weights probably fell to the bottom of the cabinet. And there's a little piece of plywood here, and it probably just broke that out of there. So this is a pretty simple glue up. I'll have to devise some kind of a clamping scheme for this, but it shouldn't be too difficult. This never happens. Uh, I went to dry clamp this to see if about fitting it up. And I, I have two clamps that will be perfect with no blocks or anything necessary. That never happens. I usually have to do some kind of complicated uh, backer arrangement. So I have this thing, this little sliver fits right in here like this. 
and it's a good fit. And these clamps right here are just the perfect thing to grab these cleats. So I grab it on one here, and it's pushing it down and also up. And then this small one for the other side, I can't believe how perfect that is. <laughs> You just have a few little issues with the finish. It's it's very minor and almost not even worth messing with, but a little bit of uh, damage here uh, down around the feet on the bottom. It's just places where it's been kicked and scuffed over the years. So I'm going to put a couple of uh, coats of uh, this is a poly white. It's a dark walnut. Just something to try to get those little defects to blend in a little bit. And I'll probably put two or three passes on that to try to make them more or less disappear. Well, good morning. Um, I let this thing dry all night after being in the parts washer, and uh, I gotta say, it looks really good. I, I see no really further evidence of, of any of the grease. So the only disassembly I'm really doing is I took the verge out here. I wanted to clean the pallets and make sure the escapement wheel was good and clean, which it sure seems to be. And this also uh, gave me pretty good access to uh, some of the pivots that are more difficult to get to. So I'm just going to go through and just add a dab of oil to each of the pivots here. And I'll do that off camera. But there's about a dozen or so spots, maybe 15, on each of the plates. And I'll probably also put just a little drop of oil on a couple of the pins here that... Uh, uh, activate the time mechanism and so forth. Yeah, some of the pivots that are on the front plate here are kind of difficult to get to, so these I'm just uh, going to service from the back side, and that's why I took the, uh, the verge out. It gives me a little better access to those points. But I think I've pretty much got everything covered here. And just kind of mopping up just a little bit of excess that's here and there. It's not a whole lot. I just don't want it to uh, make a mess inside the clock. And this thing is pretty much ready to go back together. Sometimes I wish I had three hands, but this isn't too bad to do. It's always tough to get these little screws into the spot where they go. They want to fall all over the place. But this one's actually a pretty good size, so... Not an issue. This wants to be moved up just a tiny bit right there, and the other screw is in the correct position right now, so we'll just tighten that down. Good. Good. All right, now let's see how that's going to work. Should be good. So earlier I mentioned that the, the movement was just sitting on the shoulder board uh, without it being attached, and there are a couple threaded holes here in these posts that are supposed to receive a machine thread and then they're supposed to be like a thumb nut that goes underneath and I didn't have that. So I went to Ace Hardware and I picked up this number 440 piece of all thread and it's almost the right thread pitch but not quite but you can get it up in there four or five turns and that's really enough. So I'm just going to cut this about an inch off and then I've got some little nuts and lock washers and I should be able to secure this thing properly when I put it back together. All right, I cut my all thread to length and uh, just getting it screwed in. I guess these are 440 threads. Uh, they're a little tight fitting, but the uh, all thread seems to be going up in there. Now the problem I have is I've got lock washers and nuts, which impressed me that the Ace Hardware had anything that small, but they did. And uh, they didn't have anything that's like a flat washer or a pan washer. So I'm going to make these. I kind of need a pan washer to go below the shoulder board, so I'm going to use my favorite tool here and a couple of pennies to make myself some washers. So, uh, hey, they would have been like 11 cents a piece if they did have them, so I'm saving myself a bundle here. There's one. That'll be good. And then here's the other. This is my two cent solution to not being able to get the washers that I need. This Whitney punch is like one of my favorite shop tools. 
used it so many times for things like this. Here's number two. All right, we're ready to put this thing back together. Okay, feeding the chains through. Pretty simple thing to do. All right, we're ready to reset this movement. Probably would have been wise to uh, take out the shoulder board and make a, a mock-up so that I could get the movement where I want it as far as how it's performing before I put it back in the clock, uh, before I put it back in the cabinet. But I think this will be all right. Now then, can I get these penny washers installed without dropping them into the case? I always tend to fumble these little tiny fasteners. So we're just gonna put the penny up under here onto the all thread and the lock washer around that. And then the little tiny nut on that. And I won't tighten this down until I get the chimes oriented the way they need to be, make sure they're gonna work properly. Wow, I didn't drop the nut, how about that? That never happens. All right, first we will put the pendulum in. They, the pendulum is behind the weights, so it makes sense to put that in first. And there we go. And we can hang the weights. And this is the step where if you don't get it right, it ends up in the bottom of the cabinet and breaks out the bottom, just like I found. So we'll be very careful with that. And it'd be interesting to see if this thing starts timing right away. That's a good sign. And there's number three. Now then. Well, I've done as much as I know how to do with this clock and it seems to be running fine. So we'll go ahead and put it back together. Put the face back on here. Well, there it is, a 1973 Colonial Grand Mother Clock uh, with a Josh 1973 inscribed uh, movement. Uh, we took the whole thing apart, cleaned the movement, did some minor carpentry repairs, and just did a good overall cleaning. Uh, so. Uh, this clock is ready to, uh, to go into our home. I think it's gonna give us good service for a long time. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.